already Emma. I'm about to pull up, which there's a lot of Amazon people out there. I don't think this has ever been done in the Amazon space. I'm about to pull up my order history on Amazon, my personal order history. And we're going to talk about some of these product images on how we can make these a little bit more convertibility. We can boost their conversion rate. I ever love so it. much. Are you ready for this activity? I'm ready. I also feel like moving forwards, this should be one of the questions that you ask everyone is what did what was your last Amazon order? Incredibly revealing. Truly. This is I had to I will admit that I pre-screened this to be sure <laughs> that all these things that we're about to look at <laughs> work fine. Uh, but um yes, it's quite it's quite direct. You see like those videos online People walk up to others like, hey, what are you listening to? And it's like they show their phone of like what they're listening to. This is like, hey, show yeah. me your Amazon order page. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, so we're going to have a little fun. We're going to look at some of this and we're going to talk about it. So yeah, it. let's take a look at some of these products. The first product is this. So I'll explain what this is. This was actually a gift for my wife. And this is called a Cricut Maker. Now, there's a lot going on here. Um, this is a lot going on here. So this is really, we're focused in on the images for this episode. And there's a lot going on in this first image, which is their sort of here primary image here. What is your first reaction? I'm kind of overwhelmed and stressed out by this image, if I'm being honest. And I think it's important to caveat something really important here, which is that Cricut is a really known brand. Like if somebody is into wanting a product like this, they're not going to ask for a product like this. They're going to ask for a Cricut. I know that I've seen even just content on Instagram of, you know, people talking about all the things that they're making on their Cricut. So they can probably get away with some things that other brands that did not have this brand recognition would be able to get away with. With that said, that doesn't mean that they are not also needing to per perhaps revisit and refine because as we know Amazon is the land of copycats and if somebody can do a more compelling job and make things look slicker and convince people that they don't actually need the brand name then they're very likely going to put themselves in a position of losing market share um, and so it's really important that even even if you have that kind of uh, relationship already and recognition in the marketplace, it is um, foolhardy to assume that this other stuff doesn't matter. I could not have said that better myself. I couldn't agree more. And it, it reminds me of a really interesting thing, which is a lot of times it's hard to tell why a particular brand is successful on Amazon. If you're just sort of looking at numbers and metrics, you might look at this and be like, why, how? Because um, like this image is super busy. And to your point, I have to do hard work to actually buy it on Amazon. I wanted to buy it on Amazon um, specifically rather because like if I was searching for this, uh, it's taking me away from Amazon, I, I, I believe. Like I started my search on Google, like what is it, what even is this thing? Uh, my wife says she wanted it, so I started researching it. And there was like all these different things and I just didn't understand. So there's a little worry that I would buy the wrong one. So I'm like, if I buy it on Amazon, I know the return policy uh, mm -hmm. is gonna be relatively easy. So, so I had actually had to work towards this. So to your point, I'm almost certain that this company hasn't had to be in a position where they're like, ah, what do we do to boost our conversion rate or click-through rate just because of their incredible brand recognition? So I think the lesson here is uh, don't rest on your laurels. And because like you look at this and I see the products in the bottom right. And then above that, I see uh, materials. And then on behind those materials, I see what looks like sort of like clip art, like a digital content library. 
that they also wanted me to know about. Um, so if you were looking at this, how, what would be your recommendation for how they can sort of clean up this primary image? So the first thing that I would want to do is I would actually want to go to Amazon and I would want to search whatever it is that people are most often searching yeah. for this item. So if, whether it's a cricket maker or, okay, smart cutting machine. So that's what it is. And so this is where it also gets confusing because it looks like they have a lot of different products mm -hmm. and bundles, which then puts shoppers into a confusing position of it's not just that they're trying to decide whether to get a cricket versus cricket competitors but which yeah. cricket is correct for them so it seems like it it all of these are, products are demonstrating the full yeah. smorgasbord of items that it comes with and I suppose I somewhat understand that it's important to demonstrate all of the value that comes with a product like that but I still feel like these the Cricut Maker 3, Cricut Explore 3, those images that are still showing everything that comes in mm -hmm. it are much cleaner and more professional looking than the one that we were just in, where it almost just feels like everything was thrown down on a table. Mm -hmm. So the overlay of those digital images behind everything is strange and sloppy looking. So main images obviously have a lot of rules about how you can present things, but we even have, like, I don't know if those are cords or what those mm -hmm. are sitting atop. Uh, they're, they're not the most visible with the way that they're placed. So I would just, I would want to display all of this in a cleaner and slicker way that doesn't make it look cluttered. Yeah. Can you, so is that is that the principle to follow to, well, I think the first principle was um, be careful when relying purely on your overall brand because you know, while that might be a moat for some time, you know, we just searched, there are competitors that sell potentially similar things with potentially, um, you know, more cleaner, more compelling, uh, images. Um, you know, this is, this actually has more reviews right here at over almost 5,000. So don't rest on your laurels. Like always be thinking about user experience. It, it almost seems like, uh, they're making a really good case for, you know, doing something here because this does look really busy. So I guess is the second principle here, clarity. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, so you need to both be. So the main image is a unique image, in contrast to all of the other images that are part of your uh, photo stack, because the main image is that sort of sign on on the front of your virtual door that is both needing to draw the eyeballs and attention specifically to your product listing and then simultaneously reinforce that they're in the right spot, that it's worthwhile for you to be clicking into this uh, particular product over all of the other items that are on that page that we were just looking at. And so you need to make sure that you are thinking about where might you be able to have some contrast in comparison to the other products that you're going up against while also making it crystal clear to customers you're looking for a, I don't even remember what we said that we called smart this, a smart machine. cutting machine. Yeah. Um, this is not just a smart cutting machine, you know, this is your perfect starter bundle for um, for your you know, smart cutting dreams to come true. Yeah, this was an interesting one. Um, so yes, what would be your score for this main image out of 10? Well, I would say it's like a three. It's really bad. And the thing too, which... 
this is for making things that are aesthetically yeah. pleasing, right? So this is like for making decals and stuff mm -hmm. like that to go on clothing, right? Yeah. So this is also an item where aesthetics itself is quite important in a way that some others, not to say that it doesn't matter to have well-designed images, but it's even more important because that's the kind of customer that's going to be looking at this and the kind of outcomes that they're wanting, that they're hoping to get from them. And so you want to be reinforcing some of those ideas uh, rather than giving people nightmares about the cluttered craft drawer. Yeah. yeah, right. Okay. So lots of lessons for that. Uh, this one was an interesting one. This one is interesting because um, number one, this is not a electronic, right? Electronics have their own special, especially a complicated electronic like we were just looking at. Um, this one, I, I have to imagine, would be is a lot more competitive. Um, and the way that you know, sort of found this one was sort of um, just by searching uh, rain stick instrument. I searched something like that. Um, and you sort of get these. We've got, we've got a variety of sort of different um, sponsored placements here. We have people holding rain sticks. We have someone holding rain stick, picture of the rain stick, uh, along with musical notes. Uh, and then we have a whole bunch of organic listings here, which are um, just the rain stick and I've, I got this one. This this is the one that I got. Um, what's your take on this? And I, I actually feel like this is a really fitting thing yeah. here because it's in like the you know ten, twenty, thirty dollar range for the most part. Uh, and this isn't the most complicated product to make. Um, tell me your tell me your your thought here. Well, one of the first thoughts that I have when we're looking at the sponsored items versus then. What I because the one that you chose mm -hmm. is what most people are going to think of when they think of a rain stick. Mm -hmm. They're probably going to have some sort of reference point from being in school or you know having some personal interaction with an item like this. I don't think that it's something that you just necessarily encounter without a little bit of of background mm -hmm. insight. And my guess is is that these items are more like they're lucky because they just either have been on Amazon for a while or they are uh, like they've been manufacturing rain sticks for a long time. Um, maybe they were the original rain stick makers. And then you see that the sponsored line above them are the people that mm -hmm. probably know Amazon more, yep. but are straying from this um, traditional instrument yep. they're looking at it more as a children's toy or something where maybe somebody would like that but i almost feel like the the person that would be buying a colorful plastic rain stick isn't the same person that would be buying a traditional wooden mm -hmm. rain stick instrument so this is almost uh, uh, i'm sensing a lot of like customer avatar of these companies are being aware of who is buying their who's the best fit for their product and yes. ensuring that you know it might not it might be almost incongruent if they had like colorful musical notes nearby whereas they went with a more traditional look yes well and even if you see the titles of the ones that are um the sponsored ones above this they're talking a lot about sensory auditory toys for children mm -hmm. And so it's clearly there is a market for people looking for sensory toys for children. However, those might not actually be the same people that are looking for a rain stick. So they might actually be wasting their time on trying to target this particular search term. I don't know. Um, but just the fact that, like, I'm curious, can you scroll down a little bit more? I just like to see some more of the so these organic. Are, we have some riddle. more sponsored right here. Yeah. Uh, we've got some 
some more organic over here. Mm -hmm. uh, these are sponsored. Yeah. Yeah. So almost all the organic results are this more traditional mm -hmm. style of item. Yeah. Um, you know, we have some different designs on them, mm -hmm. but you're not seeing any of these yeah. plastic ones, except now we're quite far down the page. That's right. the first. Yeah, it's really interesting too. You know, if I'm a company selling these uh, and I have the capabilities to build a more traditional looking one and a children's one, it's like leaning into that, right? It's like leaning into and optimizing for that particular particular customer avatar. Yes. Um, so yeah, so that makes a lot of sense. Uh, and I know a lot of, I talk to a lot of people that do their product development based on things like this where you look at search results and you sort of do your analysis of like, what's, what are people buying? What are they searching? What do I rank for? And then begin to use that to iterate like, oh, okay. Like I bet our company could benefit with a more premium, more expensive one. Or in this case, I, I bet our company can benefit by going in, you know, taking our traditional one, making it even more traditional, take adding a children's one to our product line, th things, things of that, if that makes sense for the company. Um, Things like that appear to be what's at play here. Yeah, I mean, that's really one of the ways when you're thinking about how to be able to be successful on a platform like Amazon, where the competition is so fierce in almost any category. Like, I, I honestly, I would not expect there to be this many reigns <laughs> companies. Like, I just, so a surprise to me. Yeah. Um, but. We see even when you're selling a rain stick, even being Chilean rain stick is not enough to be unique. And so by thinking about how you can position items in different kinds of ways, that is going to start to narrow down on who you're competing against. And then additionally, um, perhaps even give you some more compelling reasons why customers would want to choose your specific products over an alternative option that's out there. So like, you know, I'm imagining that somebody that's wanting a more traditional rain stick, this is an adult that wants the rain stick. Maybe it's even something that like they like the look of when it's sitting out in their home that would be kind of embarrassing for them if they're like, oh, I here's my rain stick. And it's like this plastic. Uh, I'm curious, what was your, if you don't mind sharing, what was- So I, what, I, I actually you know? bought it for a child. However, I wanted the child to have the traditional, more traditional experience, the, the more, which might be a unique case. But yeah, I was like, oh, I, I don't want the one that looks like a toy. I want the traditional one for the child. Or maybe not. Maybe yeah. it actually, a lot of people fall into that category. And so then maybe some of these traditional rain sticks could right. do a better job at uh, starting to expand into this sensory auditory toy right. space where they may or may not be yet, um, which I realize we're not talking about images with this conversation, but it is important to just be always thinking about the context that you're selling in and how people are going to be discovering your products, the kinds of products that they're going to be comparing it against, the specific reasons why they're looking for things, because all of that information should be informing every single choice that you're making. Here's a question for you. Some of these, well, actually most of these, it's just a picture of the product against the white background. And it's sort of subtle differences here, but some of them have a hand holding the product. Mm -hmm. uh, and then some of them have even, they add the box in there or they add sort of some musical notes in there. Um, how do you think of those sort of like little extra type components? I think that um, you just have to be careful with them because like I would even wonder if those music notes would fall beyond what would be considered uh, Amazon's rules mm -hmm. around main images because they're, they are quite strict about um, not wanting unnecessary elements in there and that's that just gets to a separate point which is whenever you see something that a competitor is doing on Amazon you shouldn't take it as a indication that you can do that 
because you're going to always see a lot of people doing things on Amazon that you're not supposed to be able to, to do. And it might just be a matter of time and eventually they're going to get mm -hmm. dinged for that. Um, but you just always want to make sure. And when it comes to, for example, main images, there's different rules depending upon the category that you're selling in. And so it's also dependent upon the specific types of products you're selling and what you can and cannot do with those. So you just want to be mindful about uh, really understanding the specifics around your category, whether you're doing the work or whether you're you know, doing your research or even when you're consuming content from other people, just always make sure that you're then running it back through uh, to make sure that you're not doing something that could be threatening your account or listing health. Great lesson. Uh, I want to jump over here to, um, I want to jump over here to, uh, this one's probably pretty competitive. Okay. This one's probably pretty competitive. Um, so this is in the tool space, which is a tricky space because I bet it's um, quite competitive. But I believe what I searched was um, Alan Wrench is set. That was pretty much it. So Alan Wrenches. Who do you think Alan is? Hmm. I don't know. Maybe he, maybe he's like from like the 1840s and like he was in some kind of uh, diff you know, awful machine accident where, yeah. you know, something, something happened and they named, oh, if only we had a wrench that looked like this, we could have saved Alan. And right. They, they named it in his memory. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, Sorry for that tangent, everyone. No, it's good. So <laughs> this is an interesting one. Um, what are your, what's your first take on this main image? So my first take is actually that this is a situation where your product development and design is going to have a big impact on the performance of your main image. Because if we see when we're looking both at this image, but as well as all of the search results, that the the packaging itself is like the color that's coming in and is really one of the dominant elements because otherwise you just have a lot of pieces of metal mm -hmm. that are all sort of next to each other. And we... I would imagine that if people are searching for an Allen wrench, they understand what an Allen wrench looks like. And so it's both the color and what might be visually appealing, but also the storage mechanism itself has uh, influence over what somebody may or may not be choosing. Because like we have the really um, like just the Allen wrenches that are probably going to be put into a larger tool set. Mm -hmm. You have the ones that have with their own carrying case and then you have the compact ones that are more portable mm. maybe if you need them in your car or something that you're kind of like going around and you have big cargo pockets that you can put them into mm. um and so i would be wanting to consider when does one actually designing the product itself like i think it's very smart that they went with this lime green yeah. color actually for a couple of reasons. One being that it's distinct and unique from the other options there. But it's also like if I'm thinking about being, if, if like the experience that I'm normally in when I'm looking for tools, it's like, where is that thing that I can't find? Yeah. And a bright green case is like, this is your Allen wrench set. Mm -hmm. Like it's right there. You don't, even if it's in a box of more things, it's easy to differentiate and to take up. And then it has the nice, sizing there that's all like really simple. So my first response is actually that um, I think that this is um, pretty well done. And it also shows off how many you get in a much more compelling way than those ones where they're still showing the packaging, but it's like they're all smooshed together. Mm -hmm. So this seems like you're not that one but like even those side angle ones mm -hmm. um like these owl tools i don't mm -hmm. know that it just seems less yeah expansive they're like overlapping on each other yeah mm -hmm. i i agree with you because if you look at this page the 
the lime green color actually like really pops out, mm -hmm. um, which is really interesting. Um, and it, it's also interesting to uh, this specific color green ish is it's sort of reminding me of like Ryobi, uh, mm -hmm. which is like a popular brand. In fact, this other company is like that might even be like the Ryobi color. But like there's probably there's you're probably right. There is some kind of lesson there where people will more likely buy a tool with this like brightly colored component more so than one that could like fade out in the background of their garage or something. Um, so that's really interesting. Similarly, you know, one thing that you see different about a lot of these product photos, and I'd be curious how you would approach this. And, you know, imagine you were working with a tool company here um, and they sort of asked you the question and they said, hey, some of our competitors listings have uh, hands in them and some of them don't. The one that I bought here did uh, even down to like they included a person with a watch holding the thing. Mm -hmm. um, and it's actually, you know, they're actually highlighting this like extender too, which actually like this other one doesn't have the extender. So like yeah. the extender to help you reach a little further uh, on this. So it's like, yeah, there's some slight product modification here too uh, compared to, you know, this competitor. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I'd, I'd be curious how you would have that discussion with this client who's maybe selling these or been selling these for a while and they're like hey what do you think about putting a person's hand this is sort of similar to the rain stick question yeah so that's again where i'd want to go to the specific category make sure that those kinds of uh enhancements are allowed and if not there's still other ways to be demonstrating this extender like even just having a picture of the extender and one of the allen wrenches not quite together to demonstrate sort of like what what is what it is because when you're just seeing it in the packaging like that it isn't clear that that is an extender and you see alternatively we have the other some of the other products that have this uh, like handle kind of thing that you put on mm. probably to make it more comfortable or perhaps even to be able to get better tension and mm -hmm. I feel like this is trying to get me to use language that I'm not like I want to say torque but I don't know if that's a real thing I'm not a handy it's gotta torque. be torque it's gotta be torque yeah <laughs> I would need to be uh researching I mean one of the thoughts that I honestly have with this is that there are people that are just going to be buying based on the color that that speaks to them the most regardless of you know anything else like all of the prices are so similar they're all highly rated. You know, that's not something that like, it's probably pretty hard to get a bad review on a product yeah. like this. And I mean, another thought that I have is like, what if somebody wants a pink Allen wrench right. that, you know, I, what, I, why? I, we're, we're making a lot of assumptions that the only people buying these are people that want really like right. masculine colors. Yeah. You know, there's a, I, I couldn't agree more. There's probably, you could probably do quite well by selling pink anything yeah. Yeah. like turning pink um what's also really fascinating about this look at these two products this one is from a company called swan lake this one is from her ho red sea and what's really interesting the exact same almost actually the the green it's one the, yeah is 50 cents more um this one says a thousand purchased in the last month the green one has double the amount of purchases um and they're both sort of similarly placed here's the organic listing for the orange one well here's they have the, the exact same title yeah the so orange that, interestingly has way more reviews yeah and somehow yeah. half as per half the purchases i would probably want to go in and dig it a little deeper like uh into like i would probably want to reverse ace in both of these and like see yeah if, if the orange one has like a much more shallow keyword pool um, mm -hmm. but it, but at first glance the color and the 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 hand the bonus hand in there um could but there's could kind it, of a hand in the orange one it's yeah. just a really weird hand what's that about but one of the other things that is interesting to me is that the title of the one that you purchased 
wouldn't call out that it has an extender in yeah. it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm I mean, to me, that seems like an easy addition that is is important to know yeah. and does seem to be a differentiator from the other items that we're looking at here. Big time. Yeah. You know, some keyword depth would, would matter uh for yeah. sure. Um so that was that one was really interesting. Um, because I, I can just imagine how, you know, selling a commodity type product where people don't have a lot of brand, you know, almost the opposite of the first product that we looked at where people were like, I want that particular product mm -hmm. brand, uh, yeah. that's a pretty well-known brand versus here, you know, I'm not seeing brands that I've heard of before. And I have to imagine that people might not be brand committed. So absolutely. Because it isn't really something that you would necessarily feel like, oh, I need to spend double. Can we actually click into the listing of the sure. one that you purchased? I'm just sure. curious to look at it a little bit. Um, can we can we scroll through the, um, yeah, I want to look at if they have any kind of, okay, so they sell a lot of tools all mm -hmm. in green. Yeah. And... I mean, their brand story is doing a good job of showing us all that. Wow. Okay. So they don't have any A plus content or premium A plus. Oh, no, they do. There we go. Yeah. It's funny how the things are positioned in different ways depending upon. Okay. Not awesome. Yeah, that's not great. I mean, wow. A, such a quick and easy win for them would be to add in a standard comparison chart to this. Uh, right. A plus because I imagine that a lot of times when people are buying tools, they would also be willing and interested in buying other tools. So it'd be like an easy, or maybe they have different types of Allen key hex sets. And so mm -hmm. either to show like, oh, we also have a 32 piece that you could right. buy. Uh, oh, that's 32 piece. That's, I guess, where I got that number. Why does it say 15 piece? Oh, 15 on each side mm -hmm. and then and plus these two things. Yeah. Okay, that is Okay. We need to adjust that. Okay. That's, that's confusing. Yeah. Um contains 15 pieces long reach keys, 15 okay. Yeah. So they are they are clearly um being successful in spite of <laughs> yes. themselves with a lot of this listing. Yeah. Uh, because yeah. also look at this description <laughs> <laughs> there's a typo uh, number one it's it's it is a great choice yeah it is a great choice for alan kex set yeah they wrote the they didn't write hex they wrote kex so yeah yeah, the, yeah that's wild yeah successful in spite of themselves um that's actually really fascinating so yeah i mean it like chrome vanadium steel sounds more impressive than alloy steel. Yeah. Maybe that's why they're beating out the Haruzdi. Yeah. I just almost wonder if the Haruzdi is like this, like if these are both just the manufacturers that are selling it in two different ways. I know. Like, look at these things. Yeah. Very, very identical. Um, so, yeah. So, interesting. Product and I mean, the rest of their images are so bad. Yeah. Like one of the things that's shocking to me, and it was this is actually something that I wanted to call out because now it's been a theme with all of the the three items that we've looked at, both the cricket, the rain stick, and the this Allen wrench, Allen key set, is that they are really missing out on also really uh, creating a compelling product image stack beyond mm -hmm. the main image as yeah. well. And it's exact. this is the exact same thing. Yes. And like, Look, it's, not clear, yeah. it's not clear how many pieces you get from these images. It's just showing us different pieces, inch size, which is, it's, oh, typos. Mm -hmm. Um no pictures really of the like that's the closest thing we mm -hmm. get to an image of the product in action yeah. but i would actually even want to see the the picture of the 
spike and the hand, mm-hmm. I would want to right. see more of that than the person, ho- than the, like the close up of the hand. I would split those pictures apart, is probably. It, this is not how you spell lengthen. No, it's not. <laughs> oh, my goodness. So I, I honestly feel like with these adjustments, this could easily be a better performing listing. And these are not complicated things that we're suggesting. No, no. And like, this wow. is something that like, I would want to show a few different the most common reasons why someone wants to use an Allen wrench, I would have pictures of the Allen wrench in action in those scenarios. So I assume that the bicycle maintenance is a big reason for that, um, given that that's one of their images, which then makes me think that that image, will, the products that are like the portable ones, maybe those are ones that are specifically mm-hmm. meant for bicyclists. And then I would actually want to position right. those like for people that are commuting by bicycle right i don't know whether they're doing that or not so sizing again yeah metric versus standard and then okay a little bit of the tech of it Mm -hmm. uh macro shot uh okay here this is comfortable grip and there's your word for greater torque congratulations Uh you do know your your tools thank you I don't know he, what that's fixing, like yeah. a tripod or something. Yeah, it's like the tripod uh, of the ring light behind me. Yeah. Um, yeah. So again, yeah, what a missed opportunity for all these things to show. Yeah. I, right. I bet, like and portable is yeah. clearly important to the, that last product because it's in the title. Mm-hmm. But so then why does do I care about the fact that it's portable? Like I would imagine that it's simultaneously because they're all right there. So you don't have to worry about Mm -hmm. not putting it back and then not being able to find the size that you need, Mm -hmm. but also that it is something that you are taking with you. And so why would you need something like this with you when you are outside of the house? And there's no, there's no demonstration of that. And the thing that I think that people forget or just dismiss is people understand why they need this. So why do I need to then show that? It's obvious that if they're buying this, it's for fixing their bike or their tripod or whatever it is. But just because it's obvious doesn't mean that you shouldn't reinforce it. Mm -hmm. Because it's actually, if you're showing, oh yeah, this is used for like fixing your bike, then it helps actually reassure people. Yeah that this is going to be great for that particular use case and scenario. And the thing about Amazon is it's not only that there's a lot of competition, it's that they don't make it easy for customers to be comparing products side by side and to truly understand why you should choose this Allen wrench set from another Allen wrench yeah. set. And so you need to be doing as good of a job as you possibly can to be able to reinforce why your product and your brand is the best fit for the reason why a customer came onto Amazon to look for this particular thing. And if you can do a better job of that, even by just showing, yes, this is great for bicycle maintenance or, you know, whatever, Mm -hmm. then that is enough for people to be like, this is the one that I want. Because I know that it's going to get the job done because that's what they're showing and telling me right here. Yeah. Already, out of the three that we looked at today, uh, let's rank them okay. for uh, what you, let's rank them real fast. So I, I know com- three completely different uh, yeah. products, but we've got the Allen wrench set. Okay. We've got the rain stick. Yeah. And we've got the Cricut Smart Cutter. Uh, Are we ranking them just on main image? Yeah, like... Which one, uh, let me ask you this. Which one do you think has the most improvement opportunity? Like which one do you think could have the biggest lift? Oh, great question. The Swan Lake one was not ranking that, like there's definitely space for it to come up in the ranks of the, um, like it, it was kind of in the middle of the page from re- what I recall. Mm-hmm. And so I, I feel like they could probably do a much better job 
at optimizing this also like from an SEO perspective. I'm not really bullets don't have much uh-huh. in the way of keywords. They're missing out on yep. uh, including the extender in the title like we mentioned. There's com- some confusion around like the 15 pieces versus 32 pieces. Uh, they could b- better visually represent that there is that extender there even mm-hmm. in the main image, I believe. Um, and with some some better lifestyle images yep. and and clarifying text, I tend to think that they might be the ones that could see the biggest lift. Also because the bar is so low in that mm-hmm. category yep. that if they put a little bit of time and thought into this, I'd be curious to see where they could go. I, I do imagine that this is also probably highly competitive from a... Um, like a PPC standpoint, mm-hmm. this category, just because there would be so much sales volume to be yeah. had for an item like this, but. Um. Which is an argument that every inch matters. So like if you can squeeze out an extra half a point of conversion rate that can translate to, you know, a cost changes that are pretty significant. You know, if you're converting, you know, one right. and a half out of every 25 clicks versus just one out of every 25 clicks, uh, that can ve- that can matter a lot. Um, so yeah, it seems like the principle that I'm sort of taking away here is like, be sure your photos aren't so redundant, you know, three of these are almost, you know, this one and this one are essentially identical. This one and this one are identical too. And you sort of have to pay attention that like, okay, they're trying to highlight metric versus the inch right. size. And then this one is predominantly redundant because it shows the extender again with somebody holding it. Um, it does show how it's being used. That extender can be used. Yeah, it's more convenient or whatever it might mm-hmm. be. But um, yeah, barely any lifestyle photography here. And that's like the only extender call out is that right. one image, which is really far into the um, t- into the stack. Which I just get a sense that that is is a significant differentiator that they have. And like even in the bullets, the only mention of it is in the second bullet. It mm-hmm. says additional extension bars. Mm-hmm. So I I feel like I to mean to do that, what with yeah right. Like I imagine that makes it more comfortable for people that don't have as great a mobility to yeah. use. I think that it could also be helpful for people that are maybe like older or right. um like I, there just seems like a lot of use cases for this element in particular that um, is a really big missed opportunity and they clearly understand the importance of it because they put it into the product Mm -hmm. but then they're failing to really uh, embrace the this piece that is probably aside from the fact that it's in a green Mm -hmm. container it's most significant differentiator yeah I, I feel like every time I talk with you, and that's as far deep as we'll go into my order history. Um, <laughs> I hope everyone enjoyed that look into my life. Um, I would say this exercise, every time I talk with you, we approach a side of Amazon growth marketing that is really unlike a lot of our other episodes in the sense of what if you just look at it and you begin to ask yourself questions like, how could this be improved? Or like, how can this better resonate with customers? Or like, what are we missing here? You know, is it, are we missing some brand story? Is it clear what it does? Like, do we have enough lifestyle photography that can often get lost with people who are, you know, spending a lot of time in, you know, niche research tools and like keyword analysis and those kinds of things. Um, so it's always so good to sort of just zoom out as far as you can possibly go and look at where your product fits in to the search results and how your product images are telling a story or not? Are they making it clear for people or who is it resonating with? Um, I think those things are so valuable. So I hope that people out there listening uh, really walk away with feel sort of inspired to relook at their product images and see how they can extend it even further. Yeah. And, you know, an important thing that I'm always keeping in the back of my mind, this was probably a couple of years ago now that Amazon briefly tested having the images scrollable Mm. on the search results page. And obviously we know that many customers are looking at the photos as 
one of the main things that they're using to determine whether they're going to buy a product or not. And so I like to keep that in my mind because it always makes me think about if Amazon were to add that as a permanent fixture of search result pages where you are able to scroll through the whole whole product stack, pro, sorry, photo stack, would you would a customer have enough information to just buy without even clicking into your listing? Right. And I think that's a really important exercise to be doing when you are putting together your product image ideation is it isn't just about getting the customer into the listing. Obviously, that's huge. If you can't get them to click in, then you can't make a sales pitch. But once they're in, you are not for sure going to make the sale. You have to reassure and convince the customer that it's a good idea not just to choose you but to not choose the other options that they are considering i love it and so it's just really helpful to not get so lost in the details that you're forgetting what the journey of the customer is like and that you it's also just helpful and can be a little bit fun to get more in tune with how you make these decisions as a customer and to start paying attention to the things that you pay attention to. Now, I wouldn't encourage you to then extrapolate that to mean that all customers are just making decisions based on whatever you're deciding upon. But if you start to get in touch with, well, what does draw my eye here and what makes me want to click into this, it can be a helpful way to be to just start to familiarize yourself a bit more with the kinds of considerations that your customer has when they're even buying something as simple as an Allen wrench set. Yeah. Um, well, Emma, thank you so much for coming back on the show. Uh, I will definitely encourage everyone to check out your YouTube channel. Uh, I think it will make anyone and sort of the, just the, who's, who's got the majority of their experience only on the Amazon space to go become a more well-rounded marketer, uh, which I think will in turn, make them an even more powerful Amazon marketer. Um, so you have a great YouTube channel, um, but where else can people, uh, if they want to ask you a follow-up question or see what else you do, aside from marketing by Emma on YouTube, uh, is there anywhere else you'd like to recommend people go? Well, thank you. Uh, if, if you l liked seeing me tear apart other people's listings yeah. and you would like us to do the same for your listing. We there also offer go. free analysis on our website, marketingbyemma.com slash free analysis. And uh, we'd be happy to take a look and give you some feedback about things that you might want to consider doing to give you that leg up to convert. There's even just yeah. a few extra co uh, conversion percentage points more yeah. could be uh, pretty significant on the overall health and performance of your business, especially given, you know, we're dealing with fee increases and a lot of different things that make profitability more challenging right now. And so digging in to some of these elements becomes a really crucial and critical part of putting together a strategy to be able to continue to grow and succeed your business with your business be it on amazon and beyond i love it emma thank you so much for coming back on the show uh, have a good one and everyone else i'll see you next week here on the pbc den podcast thank you